told you how I was born into a, a broken, abusive, toxic, dysfunctional family. A family with broken, hardened hearts. And unfortunately, my dad at the time um, was the catalyst after incredible abuse and, and God only knows um, what he inflicted on my on my family, my poor mum, dad just walked out and uh, and abandoned us, and and it literally just devastated and tore our family apart. And the emotional scars, the the hearts that were wounded, we we carried the consequences of those wounds for years. But I also want to PS that story with this tonight. This incredible God who cannot be contained, who is in the business of giving new hearts, changing, hard, impossible to reach hearts. Well, God, by his great Holy Spirit, when I came to know the Lord at the age of 15, like I shared last night, God, by his great Holy Spirit, was moving across the globe, was moving across Australia. And God, by his great Spirit, found my dad that was living on the other side, so far from where we were. And God in his mercy and his grace impacted my dad's life in such a powerful way that it changed the course of my dad's life forever. God, like, God, you can reach anybody, but there's no way in the world you can reach somebody. It impacted his life so drastically that he instantly led his new wife to the Lord. That's my stepmom. Then he hopped on a plane and flew to the other side of Australia where we all lived. We hadn't seen that man in years, and guess what? We didn't want to. <laughs> and he has the audacity to lead his ex-wife to the Lord. That's my mum. Then he leads her new husband to the Lord. That's my stepdad. Then he leads all, A-double-L, my four sisters and my brother to the Lord. Several of them are pastors today of churches in Australia. Then he doesn't stop there. He goes on a rampage armed with what? A new heart. And then he leads my aunts, uncles, cousins, first cousins. I have a first cousin in far north Queensland up the top end of Australia that my dad led to the Lord and he's a minister of an awesome church in Australia. It's like God, the very person that was responsible for decimating and destroying my family, ripping it apart, was the very person that God used as the catalyst to put my family back together with a new heart. What was, what was he armed with? Did he go away to seminary for 10 years? Did he get a degree with letters before or after his name? No, with his new heart. You know what he was armed with, folks? A testimony. A testimony of this incredible loving God that we serve and I just want to honour you, Pastor. Thank you for your commitment to the kingdom of God. Thank you that you're using your new heart. And folks, our hearts are being renewed daily. That's why it's so important that we passionately stay connected to God through our daily devotion, through our commitment to local church. Because this whole heart of ours, even when God gives us a new one, if we don't cultivate it and protect it and guard it, it has a tendency to grow hard again. But that's why we need to keep a subtle heart, a soft heart before God. And I look at the testimony of, of my dad, the, the, very, the very man that was my worst nightmare in life was the very person that God used to become the greatest role model and mentor and hero in my life. Because of my dad now, my earthly dad, my family now has a future and an inheritance in the kingdom of God. My dad went on to become my greatest hero, my mentor, my role model, the, the greatest influence in this world in my life, my dad. So I'm touring around America now as a missionary to America. I'm so far from Australia, and one day I'll get a phone call 
from a family member and they're in tears on the phone and I knew straight away what's happened. They said, John, we're so sorry. You're, you're so far from home on the other side of the world. But we're sorry to tell you that your dad, your dad's had a heart attack and died. Man, it broke my heart, church. Because I couldn't be there in the hospital with him to hold him, to kiss him, to say goodbye to him. So I hopped on a plane, I flew back to Australia, and I buried my dad, my hero. I sent him home. You go home, dad. Well done. Well done, good and faithful servant with a new heart. Well done. I'll see you again one day, dad. I'll see you again. The point I'm trying to make is this. My dad used to always say, son, you can't change the past. He used to say, son, just like the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of new beginnings. Just like the heart of God that tonight, like pastor even prayed for ones who raised their hands and said, God, I need some heart work. I need some heart treatment tonight. I need you to give me a new heart in this area. My dad used to always say to me, son, never, ever, ever give up on people. No matter how far they may seem from God, no matter how wounded, no matter how broken, my dad used to always say, son, if there is a heartbeat, there's hope. <laughs> My dad used to always say, son, no matter how far or backslid or away from God, they may seem in the natural. He used to say every heartbeat is like a prophetic prayer that says hope, hope, hope. Yeah. And while there is a heartbeat, God is passionately reaching out. Like I said last night, this Lord and Savior we serve, he's relentless. He refuses to give up on his sons and daughters. And I want to encourage you as God is daily doing a new work in our lives and giving us, creating us new hearts, clean hearts, daily, Lord. We're not going to sit back and selfishly keep the new work of what he's done in our hearts to ourselves. But we're going to, like my dad, like your pastor, like many of you, like Tanya and I, we're using our lives now as a testimony. Warts and all. Telling people the good things that he has done in our lives. It reminds me very quickly as we start to wrap up. I, I was traveling um, around this country speaking as I do. And I was speaking in this middle school. Middle school age. Any middle school kids here tonight? Anyone? Anyone? No one? All right, forget it. Oh, down the back there. Thanks, mate. <laughs> middle school age. You get it, right? And I had spoken in a public school at this assembly. And after I'd finished and everyone was being dismissed to go back to class, this young girl, middle school, right? She comes up to me with tears in her, in her eyes and she said, excuse me, can I speak to you? And I said, absolutely, darling. And I said, let me just grab a teacher. So we sat down as everyone was dismissed. And, and this beautiful young girl, I mean, she starts to tear up in the floodgates and man, tears are running down her face. She unzips her backpack and I'm thinking, man, what's going on? My, what I said must have really impacted her as I spoke about my journey of brokenness, of a lack of worth and finding meaning and purpose and hope. She unzips her backpack. She reaches in and she pulls out a bunch of letters that she had written the night before that she was intending on leaving for people, for friends. And for this young girl, her life's journey, unfortunately, had been spent, um, sent from home to home. And she had spent her life, she was never knew her mum. She was given up, abandoned, in the hospital. Her mother gave her up. Never knew her earthly dad. From conception, from her journey, she already had a sense of no value, no worth. No one wants me. I'm, I'm, I'm not loved. I'm not good enough. Her heart had already been wounded. She had spent her journey in foster home. But I want to quickly honor folks who have the hearts of God. 
to foster children and the incredible work that they do. And I want to honor them tonight because surely they have the heart of God to care enough to give these children a stable home and a sense of worth and belonging and love. But unfortunately for this young girl, her experience had not been good. She had gotten to a place where she had no sense of worth, value. She felt like she was nothing. She had gotten to a place and I think, my God, she's a child, middle school. She had decided after school that day, she was going home to the garage. She had already organized everything and she was going home to hang herself that day. My heart broke. The state of a broken heart, mate. A broken heart does not only affect adults, but a broken heart, a wounded heart, a crushed heart, has the capacity, this condition can even wound and take out our children from a young age. It reminds me of another time I'm traveling around. This is not in some third world country. Oh, those people are crazy over there. This is here in this great nation, in America. I'm traveling around, I'm speaking at this event to several hundred young people. I finished one session, I was walking to the next pavilion when I, where I was scheduled to speak. As I walked down the path, I came up behind two young girls sitting on a bench with their back towards me. About 15, 16, no more. As I got closer, it grabbed my attention because both these girls were crying, especially the one lass on the left. They were, she was bawling her eyes out. I could hear her. But they were both looking down at something. So it grabbed my heart. I thought, man, what's going on here? So I quietly walked up behind them and peered over the top to see what they were crying over, what they were looking at. And then the one girl on the left, the one that was sobbing bitterly, she noticed I was there. She became aware of my presence and she got all embarrassed and awkward and she tried to pull her jacket, her sweater down. She couldn't get it down fast enough. It was only a few brief seconds, but it was enough I saw. This beautiful young girl, 15, 16, no more, a child. She had taken to her own arm with a razor or a knife and it literally slashed her arms to pieces. There was barely a patch of unscarred skin I could see on her arm. It was a mess. And church, I gotta tell you, it broke my heart. I, I knelt down there and tears started to fill my eyes. I thought to myself, my God, what sort of pain is this child in? What sort of cry for attention, cry for help? Well, what's been done to the heart of this beautiful young girl that she's been wounded, the heart has been crushed? What's been done? Is this a cry for attention, a cry for help? What, what has been done, a, a cry of betrayal? What? See, so often we look at the symptom and we try to treat the symptom, but the symptom is a signpost pointing to an internal issue. She's broken on the inside. Something's happened. Something's wounded her. The heart is broken and wounded and now has become calloused and hard. And it moved me to my core as I teared up and started to cry. Why? Not because I'm some super Christian. Why? Because I'm a dad. I have two daughters. I thought, what if that was one of my little girls? What if that was my Tiana? What if that was my Natasha? If that was one of my little girls, ha, oh, you try to stop me. There is nothing that I wouldn't do to give my little girl the best help, to get her the best treatment. Mate, I would conquer any mountain, overcome any obstacle, conquer any wall to save my little girl. Mate, I, I would give my last cent. I would sell my home, actually. I would give my life to save one of my little girls. But all of a sudden, I believe the Lord spoke to my heart in that moment. It wasn't in an audible voice, wasn't a bright light from heaven. It was that still small voice on the inside who we know. That still small voice of the Holy Spirit that speaks so gently but packs such a punch. And God at that moment spoke to my heart and, and I believe the Lord said to my heart, how much more 
than any earthly emotion as a parent that motivates you. How much more must it break the heart of God that he has to look at that every single day and see the consequences, the fruit of wounded, crushed hard hearts. God has to look every day at his children, his sons and daughters, tearing themselves apart, tearing each other apart, destroying and devouring each other. How must it break the heart of God? And I can... I can picture God with the dawn of every single day. God waiting for the sun to come up with excitement and anticipation. Why? Because he knows on the earth. I have people that I've placed new hearts in. I have people that have known what it is to be wounded, to be betrayed, to be broken, to be destroyed. But in the midst of their pain, they've experienced my mercy, my grace, the miracle of a new heart. And God gets excited about using everyday ordinary people like you and I to, that will care enough. And God says with the dawn of every day, come on, will you care enough to go? Will you care enough to love? Will you care enough to reach out to the broken and the wounded hearts? Would you care enough not just to insulate yourself in this nice, protective, safe bubble, but will you be prepared to go to the wounded, the crushed, the broken, the destitute, the outcast, the rejected. Would you care enough not to keep the miracle of the new heart I've given you? Would you care enough to be prepared to go and reach my sons, my daughters, your brothers and sisters? And so I pray tonight as we all take this powerful message that we allow God to do heart surgery on all of us every day because we all need it, amen? Come on. We all need it every day. And that we would not tonight just be hearers of the word only, but we would be hearers that would allow that word to come and speak to our hearts. Give us new hearts, clean hearts, soft hearts. And God, that we would take the testimony like my dad, <laughs> that we would take the testimony of the new heart and the work that you're doing in our lives and we wouldn't selfishly keep it to ourselves. Give us eyes to see people around us every day that are wounded and broken and hurting, that we can bring a message of the best heart surgeon we know, and he's called Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, church. Such an honor for my wife to be here at Crossroads. Such an honor now for my life, wife and I to be living here as locals. Yeehaw. In the mighty, in the, I, you know what? I used to say that the outback of America is Texas. But I changed that now, mate. I got to say, I, I'm living in the outback of America now. <laughs> in Bluefield. So it's an honor for my wife and I to be a local, to be living here, that God is now giving us a heart for Bluefield and this region and this area to be a part of the kingdom of God to reach this area. Amen. Yeah. I'll leave you with this. Guess what? So often we look for where the grass is greener. Can I tell you where the grass is greener, folks? Where God has you planted today. Where God has you in this area is the most incredible mission field. The, the harvest is not only ripe, it is overripe and crying out to be picked and harvested. Praise God for the local church. Amen. So thank you for welcoming my wife and I. Don't forget the resource table with Tanya's uh, worship album and an uh, awesome message that I have on there. Grab one, grab two, listen to it and then bless somebody else with it. Um, Pastor, thank you for the privilege to be here. And don't forget, if you see us out and about, don't be snobs. Make sure you come up and say g'day. All right? God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you.